Hey everyone, Peter Zion coming to you from Colorado. Uh, today I want to talk about the wheat situation in Ukraine and Russia. Now, for the last several weeks, UN staff and diplomatic personnel from Turkey in specific have been working to broker a deal that would allow Ukrainian wheat to leave Ukrainian ports under Ukrainian control and get to the wider world. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces here. For one, the Ukrainians have mined their own ports to inhibit the Russians' ability to launch amphibious assaults, so they have to guide the vessels through. And then, of course, the Russians are assaulting everything that moves and a lot of things that are not, so you have to get the Russians to agree to stop their assaults on the ports. Now, right now, the Ukrainians have about 18 million metric tons stored up in their silos at or adjacent to their ports. That's a lot that needs to move. That is in excess of half of a normal harvest for the country. On Monday, August 1, we got our first ship, the Rizzoni, uh, to dock, to load up, and to leave for Lebanon. It's carrying 26,000 metric tons. So we need 700 more ships of this size if we're going to get that grain out. Unfortunately, uh, the Ukrainian harvest starts in less than 45 days. So you're talking about needing to get a dozen or so vessels in there every single day. So far, we've had one. I don't have a lot of hope for this. And then the real problem, of course, is next, is the harvest. Uh, two problems. Right now, the Ukrainians have nowhere to put it. Their silos are full from last year's harvest. They weren't able to export because the war started back in February. And second, even if the farmers were able to work their fields and not be molested by Russian troops, and remember, we've already had mass evacuations from eastern and southern Ukraine, the problem remains is that they can't get fuel into the country. So you're talking about needing to harvest industrial levels of wheat without industrial equipment, and that's just not possible. So likely end result here is that this is the last year that Ukraine participates in international grain markets. They simply don't have the capacity to get stuff up at a scale. In fact, the only place that they might be able to ship stuff is by rail and at most with significant upgrades that have not yet been done. They can probably only ship about one fifth of their normal produce out that way. The rail lines are just not designed for that kind of bulk cargo. And a lot of them have to transit a little territory called Transnistra which is under Russian control. You remove the world's fourth largest wheat exporter from the market, and you're gonna look at cascading problems, not just with food prices and malnutrition, but civil conflict and breakdown, most notably in the Middle East. The last time we had a doubling of global wheat prices, we saw the Arab Spring back in 2011. What we're dealing with is an order of magnitude more complicated and deeper rooted. And to think that we're only going to have a doubling of prices is ridiculously optimistic. Now, in the United States, this isn't necessarily a disaster. You double the price of wheat, you actually only increase the cost of a loaf of bread by 25 cents. We don't subsidize food processing like, say, Egypt does. So here, it's a little uncomfortable. It'll probably be noticed, but it's not going to be a deal killer. Other parts of the world, not so much. All right, that's it from me. Until next time.